My boy. Yo, boy. My boy. Henry Cavill. Love that man. My favorite <laughs> Superman. And, 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 and I, I love this guy so much <clears throat> that even though I have sworn off going to anything studio related, I don't go to press junkets. I don't go to red carpets. I don't go to press screenings. I don't go to any of that. But when I got the invitation to go to see an advanced screening, press screening of Argyle, I went, oh, well, maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do that. Now, I didn't end up going last night because <clears throat> I am under the weather and I decided it would be responsible of me to, to go when I should be trying to recover as quickly as I can. So, so I didn't go. And it might sound right now like that might have been a good choice. Because the first reviews for Argyle are right, right now. They're not good. <laughs> they're not good. Last time I checked, a few minutes ago, uh, getting close to 70 reviews, 32%. Mm -hmm. Ooh. On Rotten Tomatoes. Went up. <laughs> Did it go up? 35. How many reviews? Uh, We got that right now. It's 59 reviews. Okay, so that's... See, Rotten Tomatoes does that sometimes. When I checked it earlier, it, there were more reviews. There was like almost 70 reviews. And the rating was... Six, so sometimes, until it settles after a whole day. So that was probably older information. But at any rate, <laughs> I thought we'd take a look at what some of the critics are saying. <laughs> Let's do it. About my Henry's. Look what they did to my boy. <laughs> uh, his movie, Argyle. Inverse said this. It's a nesting ball of a movie, a glib, winking, referential spy comedy that layers twists upon twists on top of each other to hide the fact that there's really nothing at the center. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, wow. Screen Crush wrote, a talented cast trapped in an endless story with a fake cat. <gasps> I know that was a bit of a spoiler. RogerEbert.com writes, it sputters as it attempts to re-engineer the mechanics of better films. Uh, then a critic who liked it from Consequence, while the premise might be as familiar as an old sweater, it enhanced, it's enhanced by the way in which director Matthew Vaughn incorporates his signature artful violence del delivering 2024's first truly enjoyable action film. Okay, there's somebody who liked it. Didn't seem to <laughs> love it, but seemed to like, like it. Like the action anyway. The Times in the UK say, it's a testament to the low-grade lethargy that informs so much of the writing here that his character template never evolves further than Henry Cavill plus wacky haircut equals hilarity. It is pretty funny. <laughs> it's funny haircut. I do like that haircut. <laughs> the Messenger wrote, Though Bryce Dallas Howard is charming, the twist-dependent action comedy gets tiresome. Newsday wrote, It all feels overly familiar, but the main problem with Argyle is that we never care about the characters. Oh. The Daily Telegraph wrote, it feels like an achievement of sorts that while no one in Argyle can actually pronounce the name Argyle properly, this would not make a list of the top 50 most annoying things about the film. <laughs> and I just, and I remember reading a little bit earlier today, the, the Rolling Stone headline mm -hmm. was, the big twist of Argyle is that it's a truly terrible movie. Oh. Look what they're doing to my boy, Rob. Vicious. Vicious. Look what they're doing to my boy. Now, <clears throat> listen, I got to tell you though, I I didn't mention it on the show, but you guys know I was thinking it. I was starting to w worry about this film because the review embark... This movie opens tomorrow. Going to be in theaters tomorrow. I've got my tickets to it. The review embargo for it didn't lift until today. The day before the movie opened. And whenever that happens, not every time, but most of the time, that is a... Big red flag in the air saying, the studio yelling, we don't believe in this movie. We believe that when we show this to people, those people aren't going to like it and we'll talk about how it's not good. Therefore, we want to hold off this thing till the day before the movie comes out. And I, I got a little bit worried that that was going to be the case. We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Fume. Quitting cold turkey is great in theory, but you and I both know it's way more difficult than that. And that's why there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some fake online promises. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume. And they look at the problem in a different way. Instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavor air device that does just that. See, instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful 
chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. You get it, instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. I personally didn't know what to expect when I first got my Fume. I mean, I've never liked vapes, but my goodness, the taste. The first time I tried it, I was completely sold on it. It was incredible. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the Journey Pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use the code CAMPIA to save 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. That's tryfum.com and use the code CAMPIA to save an additional 10% off your order today. Rob, I haven't seen it yet. Nope. I, you know, Ray and I and Ann, we may come walking out of Argyle tomorrow and go, hey, we like that. <coughs> that was fun. <coughs> right now, they're <laughs> I'm getting sick, man. I, I don't feel I don't know if day. I can make it to the screening tomorrow. <laughs> um, maybe, you know, maybe we'll walk out and go, hey, yeah, I get it. Other critics didn't like it, but we did. I don't know. Maybe I'll like it. Hopefully I will. But it, it, this isn't positive stuff, Rob. Are you surprised to hear this? I don't know. What do you make of the reviews we're hearing? You know, I am because I'm a big fan of Matthew Vaughn's brand of action, humor, over the top, hell's a pop and violence combined with spy thriller action. Like, I, you know, I love the first Kingsman. So good. X-Men First Class, like we've talked about. Really great movie. So good. You know, but what's interesting is when I saw the, when I saw the trailer for this movie, I thought it could go either way because this kind of, this kind of balance is tough. Guy Ritchie does the same kind of thing. Quentin Tarantino in a movie like Inglorious Bastards and um, and Django Unchained kind of does the same thing too. But he's able to keep that tone in place. You know, with Brad Pitt's character, Gorlami. You know, when he it's goofy, but he never lets it go too yep. far. Yep. And it is really hard. I mean, Dr. King Schultz in Django Unchained is, again, that is a very difficult tonal uh, high wire act and if you don't make it and i was watching this trailer and it looked fun to me i'm like as long as he nails the tone like in the first kingsman we're gonna not be okay. like the second kingsman not like because no, that was not so good. no and 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 it's funny to me that we hear that it well a lot of critics say it isn't working and i'm disappointed because i was really looking forward to this yeah i, I mean i was stoked to hear it i i even liked the first trailer quite a bit like, it's not the first time we've seen a story like, wait a minute, the things you write actually happen. Like, we, we've seen that trope used once or twice, but it's not an overly used one. No. And I thought in, I mean, you got Bryce Dallas Howard, yep. you got my boy, Henry Cavill in there with a with a solid director. I had a lot of hope. And again, I, I haven't seen it yet. I might see it tomorrow and like it. I hope yeah. I do, but I mean, this isn't promising. It, you know, it harks back, one of the most inexplicable uh, movies that I've ever seen that didn't hit that I loved was Man from Uncle. I love that movie. And and <laughs> that movie to me was, was kind of like, if I were to equate it to another movie, it would be like Soderbergh's remake of Ocean's Eleven. They both had, like, Ocean's Eleven was not the greatest movie in the world, but boy, does that movie have staying power. Every time I watch it, I love it. It's so much fun to watch. You just like those characters. And I know that Army Hammer and his difficulties playing Ilya Kuryakin made it so, and the movie didn't make a ton of money. But that movie, I love it. And I love Henry Cavill in it. And I was kind of looking forward. I was hoping that there was a little bit of that man from Uncle flavor. Yeah. But now we need to turn our attention from Argyle to the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, which put out a banger of a trailer yesterday and and hope that one works better. Uh, guys, what do you think? Does this hurt your enthusiasm a little bit? I'm not going to lie. It hurts my enthusiasm. I'm still going to go see it. Hopefully I like it, but look what they've done to my boy. Anyway, guys, whatever you guys think, jump on down and let us know your thoughts. Hey, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.